Happy Sabbath, guys. May God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known on earth. Your saving power among all nations, let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nation be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the people with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. This is from Psalms 67, verse 1 to 5. This is your call to worship. Happy Sabbath. Um, before we continue further with our video and our service, I would just like to invite the Holy Spirit, um, God the Father, and the Son to continue to worship and be with us in this moment. So without further ado, let us open up with a word of prayer. Our Father in Heaven, thank you for um, being with us throughout this week. Thank you for your Sabbath day and this awesome day of rest. Um, thank you for this first Sabbath of the quarter um, and bringing us to the fourth quarter. Lord, we know it's been a long year, but uh, we continue to praise you and uplift you and um, be with you in this moment. I continue to uplift our family and our loved ones far and near. Our Pastor Tulai and Father Tuomotu and their families, um, our head elder and his family, and um, all the way to the youngest of our church uh, members, Lord, I ask that you continue to be with us here today. Um, bless our speaker uh, and continue to bless our youth members as well. And any visitors or our guests who may be watching and being with us in this moment. Anything else forgot to mention our prayers, please forgive me. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Enjoy the rest of the video. Create in me a new heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. One of the main reasons why I come to this spot, and this is my favorite swim spot on the island, is so that I can just release a lot of the pressure, a lot of the stress, a lot of the problems that I'm facing in life, and I just come here and leave it here. And it's a beautiful scenery here, especially as I'm watching the sunset. The Bible verse comes to me and says, Create in me a new heart, O God. I renew a right spirit within me and that's what the sunset is kind of doing for me and when the sun sets and pops right back up my heart my mind is all renewed and I praise the Lord for that and this morning I, I or wherever you may be at um, on this Sabbath day I I pray and I hope that you have the same thing appreciate the small things in life especially now and serve God with all your might. Because everything like this, even this sunset, even this beach, everything will be in vain soon. And I would hate, I would hate for us to live a lifetime and not see a, a sunset that is eternal. I would like to also welcome our special speaker, Pastor Dorcasi Bunileva. 
I want to thank you for choosing to speak to us and our youth. And I hope and I pray that God bless you and your ministry. But for now, I just want to enjoy this sunset with you all. Sabbath friends, uh, this time is our offering. Um, our offering today goes to our lo uh, local church budget. Um, yeah, but before I uh, bless our offering today, I'd like to read a scripture from Psalms 37, verse 3 to 5, and it reads, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. I encourage you guys to also, you know, um, continue your, your offering, and uh, God will open open up a lot of a lot of doors for you in your future. And, uh, yeah, this time let us uh, bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. Thank you for, uh, thank you for the, the mobile ministry that our youth has put uh, put together. Father, I thank you may. Uh, bless our speaker today, our special speaker. Also, all the, the viewers who are watching. Uh, also, want to bless the, the hands that are giving their offering. Continue uh, giving. Uh, give, uh, keep us safe. Uh, give us good health also in this time, time of need. Father, thank you again for everything. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
morning and happy Sabbath. <clears throat> Aloha. Uh, good to be with you, uh, brothers and sisters uh, of the Aloha State uh, here in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, looking forward to a time after this COVID season that we can uh, see each other face to face. Uh, but we like to thank our, our little group of uh, Adventist Christians there in um, Hawaii and especially the young people for this opportunity and I am blessed and honored to uh, be your speaker this morning and by the grace of God uh, you will not see myself in the flesh but the word of God high and lifted up uh, this morning let us pray our Father and our God we just praise you and we thank you that you have brought us through yet another week to your Sabbath. And I pray, Lord, that for all of those who are listening this morning, uh, whether in their living rooms and their patios and beautiful Hawaii, that regardless of where they are at spiritually, may they know that you know their name from the beginning of time. We praise you and we thank you for the time together. And may you anoint these lips of clay, and may you be high and lifted up, is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> um, this morning, our message is taken from the Gospel of Luke. But before we get into this old narrative, in my Tongan culture, somebody's name is very important to whom that person is. Uh, usually in most families that uh, when you have your children, uh, if you have uh, other siblings or especially a sister, uh, she gets the blessing of what? Of naming your kids. And uh, this morning, we find that there is a certain somebody whose name meant righteous one. And before we uh, run ahead of the story, let's dig into the Word of God, the Gospel of Luke. Uh, if you brought your Bibles with you, uh, hold on, please. My screen just went dark here. Um, let me make sure it's working. There we go. Okay. The Gospel of Luke, 19th chapter. And beginning with verse number one. And Word of God says, Jesus entered Jericho and was just a passing through. Pause. Verse 1 tells us here that Jesus uh, was coming through Jericho, and was he coming to stop? Was he coming to uh, pitch a tent? Was he coming to hold an evangelistic series? Far from it. The Word of God says that Jesus was simply what? He was just a passing through. Uh, verse 2. I'll ask my wife uh, to read verse 2. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector who, and was wealthy. Who was his name? His name was Zacchaeus. And can you imagine when mom and dad had little Zacchaeus uh, there in Honolulu General and when they first met their child and gave him the name Zacchaeus. And what was the name Zacchaeus meaning again? The name Zacchaeus meant righteous one. And as they gathered around little Zacchaeus and they just had so much uh, hope for him and maybe they, because his name meant righteous one, they thought this was going to be uh, a child that will grow and be a mouthpiece of the Lord and he will go and spread the gospel. But Dr. Luke tells us uh, this morning that uh, Zacchaeus was a what? Not just a any tax collector, but he was the supervisor. He was the chief 
tax collector. And because of that, scripture also tells us that Zacchaeus was what? He was very wealthy. And he was wealthy because if 20% of what he collected went to Caesar, he will tax you and I another 20% on top of that for whom? For Zacchaeus. That's right. So because of him being a cheat, Zacchaeus was very wealthy. He had the fastest camel in the driveway. He had the biggest house up on the hill in Jericho. He had all the stuff. He had all the material things that everybody looked at and said, Oh, I want to be like Zacchaeus. That's what I want. I want to be rich. And if you want to be rich... Yes, that was Zacchaeus. But unfortunately, unlike his name, he was far from righteous. But let's continue with this whole story. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see. He wanted to see what? What's verse 3 that Kasi just read? He wanted to see whom Jesus was. Remember when we started in verse 1. Dr. Luke tells us that Jesus was what? He was just simply passing through. And as he was passing through, Zacchaeus now. Now, we're not talking about uh, Zacchaeus the blind man or Zacchaeus uh, the beggar. This was Zacchaeus the affluent, very well-to-do Zacchaeus of the city of Jericho. And as Jesus was passing through, he wasn't passing through by himself because there was a crowd with Jesus. Because at this point, uh, people knew that uh, when Jesus came into to town, uh, he, this was a man uh, that was able to what? Allow the lame to walk, allow the blind to see, raise the dead. This was that Jesus. And again, Zacchaeus simply what? He simply just heard. He heard of this Jesus. He heard of the things that Jesus can do for people. And as he came to Jesus with his fat wallet and his fatter account, all he wanted was to see Jesus. <laughs> but Scripture tells us something about humans because our flesh when Zacchaeus came closer to Jesus this crowd was not just any crowd this was the crowd that made Zacchaeus what this was the crowd that made Zacchaeus rich in other words this was the crowd uh, that Zacchaeus robbed that would take their hard-earned money because he was that tax collector. But in his time of need and in coming to Jesus, and when they saw that it was whom? When they saw that it was Zacchaeus himself. Ha! Ah! I said, oh, Brother John, I said, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Zacchaeus, uh, wrong angle here. And he went to Sister Mary said, oh, I'm sorry, Zacchaeus, we can't help you here. Because they knew of what Zacchaeus had done to them. But remember, because of his occupation, and his occupation was a what? Was the head of uh, the tax uh, collector agency of Jericho. And because of that, he knew all the little uh, side roads uh, that would get him anywhere around Jericho. And when Jesus was moving with this crowd or multitude, uh, do you think it was very fast? I would think it was moving very slow because there was a multitude with Jesus. But because again of his uh, background of a uh, tax collector, Scripture tells us that Zacchaeus runs. Now, somebody of Zacchaeus' status 
again, very affluent, well-to-do, very rich. Rich folks or well-to-do folks in Jesus' day, especially men, they don't run to anyone or anything. People do the running where? Towards them. But because Zacchaeus wanted to meet Jesus so much, he didn't care about uh, his status anymore. He didn't care about, uh, about his Armani suit. He didn't care about uh, all the material things of the world. He just wanted to meet Jesus. Wherever you're listening from this morning, somebody has tuned in and maybe you have tuned in by accident but like Zacchaeus you may have all the material stuff but there is something missing there is something missing in your life and that's where Zacchaeus was it wasn't all the zeros that he had in his bank account when he checked the ATM. It was the zero in his heart. There was a void in his heart and in his life. And when he simply what? When he simply heard that Jesus was a passing through. He said to himself, I have to meet this Jesus. And when he came and church members said, Ah, oh, no, you don't. Zacchaeus starts running. Uh, you know, young people, and especially young people, some of you are listening this morning, and like Zacchaeus, you're tired of being out there in uh, the lights of the nightclub or holding the bottle of alcohol or, uh, you know, taking a hit of that uh, marijuana joint or whatever, whatever, uh, whatever other things or mess that you and I can get into because of the devil. And after a while, like Zacchaeus, you may be asking yourself this morning, there's got to be something more. And as everybody held their hands up and said, no, you don't, Zacchaeus. I pray that in your community of faith, that in your church, that our adults, our parents are not doing the same thing to you that these folks were doing to Zacchaeus. Because they said, oh, Zacchaeus, you are not ready for Jesus. Go and clean yourself up. Cut your hair. Take off that jewelry. Oh, you're pregnant? Oh, Jesus has nothing to do with you. Out of wedlock? Oh, mercy. Even worse, Jesus doesn't want to have anything to do with you. I want to tell you this morning that Jesus wants you. He doesn't care about all the, the, the stuff or the mistakes you've made in the past, but he simply has come and he's simply passing by. And he's saying, Hawaii, you are a child of my kingdom. And I need you to follow me. Sorry, we're running out of time. And let's continue this whole narrative. Zacchaeus now, because he knows all the little routes there uh, in Jericho, he runs ahead of this multitude. They said no, and he easily could have said, you know what? I don't need Jesus. I'm comfortable. I have what I need. 
And all these people want to be me. When I sit from where? When I sit up from uh, the hilltop of my mansion in Jericho. But no. Zacchaeus knew that Jesus was simply passing through. And he had to have an encounter with Jesus. How desperate are we to meet Jesus today? Zacchaeus runs. And we know the old narrative. He comes to this uh, sycamore tree. And he doesn't care again about his uh, um, Armani robe. If he got it dirty. But he starts climbing. And he climbs up. And he waits. Remember, he simply just wanted to what? I just want to see Jesus. Uh, but historians tell us that Zacchaeus was about four feet tall. But during that mid-morning, Zacchaeus was probably feeling like he was more like two inches tall spiritually. Because... His community had put him in his place and said, oh, Jesus don't want anything to do with you. And Jesus is on his way to the temple. He doesn't, want, he doesn't have time for you, Zacchaeus. But Zacchaeus comes and he climbs up to the sycamore tree. And imagine... Uh, the branches of sycamore trees as they branch over, it becomes a shade for when people walk through. And I believe that in uh, Zacchaeus' mind, as he contemplated and played out the scenario in his mind, he said, if I can just uh, be secluded by myself where? Up where nobody else is at. Where nobody uh, assumes they were where I will be at. I just want to see whom? I just want to see this Jesus. And I'll go on my way to my mansion. But listen to this part of the old narrative. Uh, can you read verse 5? When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. When Jesus... Reach to the place of where Zacchaeus was. <laughs> Scripture says that. What does he do? He stops. He stops immediately in his tracks. And he does what function? And he looks up. And then he does what? And he says, Zacchaeus. Righteous one, come down. Wow. Can you imagine Jesus walking in the midst of this multitude? And I'm sure by now the multitude had been whispering to each other and, and probably were giggling. Little Zacchaeus, he thinks he's going to cheat us out of our money and then we're going to just be nice to him and let him come to Jesus? <laughs> I don't think so. But to their surprise, Jesus stops, he looks up, and he calls Zacchaeus down. Read a couple more verses, please. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he is gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here, now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. So, as we end, as we come to the end of this old narrative, Jesus stops and he puts... Zacchaeus on blast and he says righteous one come down we need to get to your house and have some loot 
We need to get to your house and, and have some motai. We need to get to your house and just break some bread together. And as the crowd was saying, yes, another sinner won to the Lord. No, that's not what scripture says. The saints were like, oh, wow. Jesus is going to the house of a sinner. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? And Jesus is going to Zacchaeus' mansion. The house of the man who's been cheating us. But you see how Jesus affects people genuinely. How does Zacchaeus react? Zacchaeus, I am, uh, uh, he says, Jesus, Rabboni, I am humbled that you would want to have something to do with a sinner like me. I just wanted to see you and just imagine what kind of man this is. I heard this man Jesus was a coming through. And yes, I have all the things of this world. But I just wanted to meet you, Jesus. And because, Jesus, I know your grace and sufficient is enough for even me. From this day forward, I'm going to do what? I am going to love the poor. I'm going to, and if anybody here uh, that I have cheated, I will pay you four times more than however much I took from you. And as, can you imagine now, as this multitude is just in awe, Jesus walks away with righteous one. And as they walk up to the hilltop, to Zacchaeus' house, <laughs> The same Jesus is looking you in the eye this morning, friends of mine in Hawaii. And just like Zacchaeus, he's asking you and I the same question. And he's no longer saying Paula. He's not. He's no longer saying Kasi. He's no longer saying Sione or Mele, Loni. He's no longer saying. Uh, church family of Hawaii but he's simply saying righteous one it's time to come home I was just a passing through but righteous one is your true name because you were righteous and you were meant for the kingdom from the beginning of time but because of sin there's this time of separation, but Jesus says, don't hang your heads and don't ever give up. I have stopped through and I want you to come down. I just want to have some lunch with you. And I want to remind you that yes, I, Jesus, am the love of the world. Because First John tells us that Jesus is what? His character is that Jesus is love. And John chapter 3 verse 16 then tells us, He loved you and I so much that he gave one of his sons. No, his one and only. But I like the word after that. That whomsoever. And who is whosoever? That's you and I. And Jesus says, uh, I don't need you to learn all 28 fund fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventist uh, church doctors right now. There, there'll, be, there'll come a time for that. But right now, I want you to believe in me, Jesus, just like Zacchaeus. So you and I 
can be reminded that we are the righteous one. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, hear my humble cry. And while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. Come on, sing with me. Savior, oh, Savior, hear my humble cry. And while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. And Zacchaeus, as he and Jesus were laughing and having a good time that afternoon, he didn't care that all of Jericho was mumbling and gossiping about him. Because he says salvation has stopped by this house this evening. And my prayer is that wherever you are at this morning, this same Jesus. And if you are in the shoes of Zacchaeus, may you remember that you are righteous and you are a child of the kingdom. He has stopped through to remind you and to remind me that this world is not our home. We are simply just passing through. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Father, this evening, I don't know who has received this word this morning, but throughout Honolulu and various places in Hawaii, somebody has tuned in and just like Zacchaeus, They are just in need of a Savior. But just like Zacchaeus, uh, may they remember that they are a child of your kingdom. That their first name is righteous. And you have come not to judge, but to save. And through your grace, your mercy, your power, and your love. May you lead in not just some, but each of our young people's lives. Be with our parents and be with our community there in Hawaii as they are continuing uh, to become and try uh, to be a mouthpiece of yours to let others know of how good you are. Empower them. Equip them, Lord. And let them know that they have a work to do. For yes, you are at the door. I am humbled and blessed that uh, they have asked us to uh, send this message over to Hawaii. But we look forward to a day, if it's not us meeting physically face to face, that we will then meet at the pearly gates where we will all stand with you, Jesus, Moses, and the rest of the righteous. Not just for a season, but for eternity. But until then, may the love, grace, and mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ go before you, behind you, beside you. But may he live outside each and every one of us, not just on this day, not just on the seventh day, not just on your Sabbath, but every day of our lives. Is our prayer, may all God's people say, Amen. Good night. Thank you. And we love you. We thank you very much for joining us this Sabbath on our virtual online church service. May the Lord bless you and may He keep you. Go now in peace. God bless. For some who don't understand our purpose and may not understand our praise, 
Where's the family in Jesus' name? I'd like to tell you the reason why we're saying family. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm happy. I sing. I sing because I'm free. His eyes on me. His eyes on the spare. That's the reason. That's the reason why I sing. I want to know if you can help me say glory. Glory, hallelujah. You're the reason. Keep in mind is keep God first, because that's what's gonna get You're you through everything. As I've done. You're the hymn in my heart, Jesus. You're the reason why. I sing. You're the reason why I sing. 